And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Penn State Alumni Association's flower arranging class. We have a great turnout tonight. Uh, we just ask that you remain muted throughout the class, put any questions or comments right in the chat, and um, we are going to get started here and just letting everyone else in through the wait room. So just one more minute. We got a good crowd tonight. All right. I think that means that. Yep. Kathy, you can get started. All right. <laughs> so, um, so tonight we're going to make a flower arrangement. The arrangement we're going to make is an all around, which is made to sit um, in the center of a table. Using the design I'm going to show you tonight um, would. Um, with just a few minor variations, you can change it into a one-sided design. You can elongate it really well. So instead of being round, it'll be oval shaped. Um, with a little bit of variation, a little bit more work, you can also turn it into a crescent. So the basic design is an all around. Um, so I teach the flower arranging class on campus. Um, and this is always the design we start with. And this is the one that helps the students kind of get used to the material, um, the stuff they're working with. They start learning the flower names and um, uh, the greens that we use and things like that. So I'm gonna start out the same way. We're gonna talk about some of the materials that we use. Um, so what I've got is a block of floral foam. Now the floral foam, the difference, we have a wet floral foam and dry floral foam. Wet floral foam holds water. Um, the dry floral foam never, ever, ever holds water. You can soak it in, a, in the sink for days and it's never gonna absorb water. The wet floral foam will soak up in about 30 seconds. Okay, it doesn't take very long. When you use, so when you're buying it for fresh flowers, you wanna use wet foam. That's what it's gonna be called, wet floral foam. This happens to be Aquafoam. Um, there's other brand, lots of different brands. And you can buy this at Michael's, you can buy it at Walmart. Um, it usually comes like in a block like this um, and maybe three blocks high, sometimes six for about eight, $9. Um, so it's pretty cheap. Something, a block like this will go a long way. Um, the container that I'm going to use tonight is this bowl right here. So this is, um, you can see it has a square in the center, right? So this is made to fit that block. You, maybe you don't have this bowl. Maybe you don't want to spend money on this bowl. You've already spent money on flowers. You've spent money on foam. Maybe you don't want to spend money on a container. So there's lots of containers you can use. This can easily be substituted with a, um, like a butter tub right? A cereal bowl. Um, I have a couple of containers here. So this nice looking container here, this is made to be seen, right? So you don't want to cover it up. So you might use something like that. You're going to put your foam in there. You're going to tape it down and it's going to, it should work fine. Um, fish bowls. A lot of people like to use fish bowls. It's pretty um, popular right now. One of the problems with fish bowls is the shape. It's an odd shape. So how do you get your flowers to stay in without falling out? That's one of the problems that I think is uh, pretty common is the flowers send, tend to want to flop out of here. Um, so we're gonna talk about using foam. Um, one of the nice things about foam is it, it cuts and shapes very nicely. So um, I'm gonna take the camera now and sort of face it towards the table so you can see what I'm doing. So you don't have to look at my face anymore. <laughs> so you can just look down at the table, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now. And hopefully that'll give you a better view of things. Um, yeah, I guess that's okay. So, all right, so this is our foam. So it cuts very easy. So I just have a regular kitchen knife, right? Um, the blocks that we use, 
uh, the same company makes the bowls that we use. And so these little perforations in blocks, cut that down, that fits perfectly right into the bowl. If you want to use a different type of container, we talked about this one, all you need to do is cut it to fit. So we're going to go, and it doesn't have to be a great fit. Um, really easy to cut, get it down in there. There you go. So you're ready. You're going to tape this in place anyway. You're going to use floral tape. Um, floral tape is important because um, it can get wet and it's not going to come off. As long as the container is dry when you use it, your floral tape is gonna stay, it's gonna stick. Some people like to use, I don't know, scotch tape, stuff they have at home, you know, scotch tape or um, I don't know, whatever that yellow tape is that everybody has, right? The problem with that is as soon as that gets wet, it's gonna slide right off the bowl. And this is gonna get tippy and, and potentially could fall out with all the flowers in it. You know, it might be weighted off to one side, it might actually flip out of the bowl or certainly tip. See how easy that is to tip? So you want to tape that in. Um, and that's where the floral tape is. You can buy the floral tape anywhere that you buy floral supplies. So Walmart carries it, you know, Michaels carries it, Target carries it. Um, any craft store will carry it. The floral foam and the floral tape, it's really good to have. It looks like duct tape. And it kind of acts like duct tape as well, but it's nice and thin and easy to use. Um, so that's our floral tape. Now, what I've got when you wet your when you wet your floral foam, you want to drop it in the water. So fill a bucket, a pan, or your sink, and cut it to shape. Drop it in the water. Thirty seconds later, it's 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 absorbed. It's got it floats. It's going to float at. Um, kind of bob at the top, the whole thing, and it's gonna turn a dark color. So I wanna show you this. I got this bowl ready for me to use. Notice the difference in color, right? This is really heavy and this is really light. It shows you how much water this absorbs. It holds a lot of water, okay? So this is the bowl I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna set this other one aside. I'm gonna set these little trimmings aside. Oh, I wanted to show you this too. So this is another type of container that you can use, and this will fit a whole block of the foam in it, okay? So if you wanted to make a large, large arrangement. Your arrangement size is gonna be about one and a half to two times the, your container size. So if this container is eight inches, my arrangement is gonna be, you know, something like around 12 to 14 inches. It's gonna be quite large, um, or, uh, 18 inches. This one, uh, six inch bowl, one and a half to two times means it's gonna be nine to 12 inches in diameter. It's a good length. So that's still gonna be quite large. Um, a good size for putting in, in uh, the center of a typical dining room table, okay? Um, so the first thing we're gonna start out with, I wanna show you some of the plant material I have. And uh, I don't know if this is gonna surprise anybody, but this is what I have. Does this look familiar to anybody? This is, um, um, what's it called? The fern that's out, that you grow outside. Um, peacock fern, I think, is that what they call it? Um, I go outside all the time and harvest. I harvest many materials outside. So this is a typical, typical garden fern. I've got, this is from a hanging pot. This, you might, be familiar with this. This is asparagus fern. This is a traditional, you know, common house plant, right? Um, and I have one more type of fern. And that's this. This is um, actually from a rabbit's foot fern. And it has a nice delicate look to that. Uh, so I'm gonna use a little bit of each of these. So I harvested these from plants that I have or plants that I you know, know that I can harvest them from. If you're buying plant material, you may um, find fern. Um, you can go to 
you know, grocery stores, you can go to the um, uh, florists, you can, you can buy uh, lots of different kinds of plant material. Um, I like to help my budget by going out and harvesting, okay? Um, things, other things you can harvest outside, pasta. Pasta leaves work great in an arrangement. Um, trimmings off the ends of trees, maple trees, you know, anything like that works fine. There's a lot of shrubs that you can trim off and use. Um, a lot of other plant material uh, from your garden, just walk through your garden. Anything with a decent thick stem that you can put into your oasis will work perfect. Um, if you're purchasing it, think about um, leather leaf ferns, very common, a greenhouse, um, uh, florist green. Um, there is um, salal, which is like a lemon leaf, uh, a branch. Um, I just saw some of that when I was out picking my flowers today. I was at Wegmans and they had salal. I ended up not buying it because it didn't look, didn't look good to me. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna go outside and harvest. So I did. Um, so this is the fern that I'm gonna use. Now, when you make one of these type of arrangements, the first thing that you wanna you wanna do, I'm trying to get that set up. All right, so you wanna green. You always wanna green because if you are going, if you've got all your flowers in and then you stand back and look at it and you see, you know, look how ugly this is, right? It's got this ugly tape, it's got this ugly green, it's got this ugly bowl. If you have a pretty bowl, that's a little bit different, but you're using a butter dish or something. You don't want to. You don't want to see it. It's ugly, right? So you want to hide it. Um, if you, that's what the greens do. They hide all this, all these mechanics. Um, if you, um, you put all your flowers in, and then you stand back and say, "Oh, but look, I can see the, I can see the tape, and I can see the foam, and I want to hide that." And you go back later and try to stick something in there, you're going to probably end up breaking your flower heads off. That's why Kathy, you, we had a question come in that was asking, um, how do you make sure there are no ants or anything while you're picking live plant material? Is there oh, any tips you have? A, that is a very good question. So the question is, how do you know you're not bringing some friends in from outside? Um, my best, uh, what I do is I, I shake them really well when I have them outside um, and then I leave them set put them in a cool location in kind of warm water. Like you don't want to put it in cold water, but something that's room temperature warm. Put them in there, sit them someplace for an hour or two. That helps to harden them off and they actually work a little bit better. Um, and give the insects a chance to leave. And, and most, off, most of the time they're going to leave. Um, can you be 100% sure that you're not bringing something in? Probably not. I mean, you're using material from your garden, from outside, you know, you're invading their territory. So, you know, shake them off the best you can. You can hose them off too. You can wash them in the sink. There's no, there's no problem with taking something like this, filling your sink up with soapy water and swishing it around and cleaning it off that way. And that's, that works fine. Um, I tend to, you know, not bother too much with the insects. They don't bother me. Um, but that is a good question. You don't want to bring bugs into your house. So um, I would say give them a good shaking when you have them outside, put them in a container that you can sit and, and, and leave it sit for a while to, to kind of let them leave on their own, especially flying insects. They'll leave at that point. Um, and then if you're still not sure, go ahead and fill your sink up with soapy water. Just put them in there and squish them around. And then you want to rinse the soap off again when you're done. Uh, is that good? Does that answer your question? Okay. So we're going to green first. So this is what we're going to do. So I got my little clippers. So I'm going to look at the size of my bowl and I'm going to say, okay, I want to make it about 12 inches in diameter, which means from the bowl, it's going to come out about three inches. And if you look at the way this, the foam is, um, you're going to want to cut your stems at least six inches 
long. That might seem a bit long, but you can always cut more off when you use them, but you can't add more once you cut, right? So I'm gonna start cutting. I'm just gonna use the tips to start with, but I'm gonna use the whole plant. The whole, I'm just setting these aside. So I'm gonna get these tips. So I'm gonna start with four of these tips to start with, right? And this, what I do with these first four is I'm gonna set my diameter, okay? Um, I'm gonna put these fern in so they're parallel with the table. They're gonna go straight in. They're not gonna go up in the air like this. They're gonna go straight in, okay? They're, because of the natural curve of the fern, that they're gonna curve down and they're gonna hide the container. So when it's sitting on a table, you're not gonna see the container at all. What you're gonna see is the curve of that fern. That fern is gonna rest on the table like a big, um, you know, like a, like a tablecloth, uh, you know, overhanging and hiding, you know, this ugly portion here. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna cut that a little bit shorter and I'm gonna strip a little bit off, okay? So that I have, no leaves, no little side leaves on those stems. So when I put them in at the edge of the bowl, and it's gonna go in like that. You want it to go in, you want the stems to go in um, about three quarters of an inch. Uh, they can go in somewhere between one half and one inch. If, if, the, if the stems that go into the oasis is less than half an inch, they're probably gonna fall out. If it's more than an inch, they're probably gonna start bumping into other plant material as you put it into the foam. Okay, so notice how it is right down on the edge of the, edge of the bowl, okay? So that's two, and then we're gonna go, since I am making a round one, I'm trying to make mine all about the same length. Three. And the way you can adjust the length on these or the, the shape of the uh, arrangement, so this is gonna be round, so it's gonna be the same on all sides. If you wanted to make it oblong, uh, oval shaped, you would take two sides and make them longer. That's how big your arrangement's gonna be, right? As, and then it's gonna be shorter on one side, longer on the other, so then you have sort of an oval shaped arrangement. If you want to make a one-sided arrangement, you might take your fern at this point and start putting a back on it. And you can already see, you now have one-sided. Now this is gonna be either a one-sided um, fan shape or triangular shaped. Um, if you wanted to make a crescent, you would put this off to the side and your crescent would fall from the point and it would come around the container this way. That's how your shape is gonna be. You can make an inverted T or an, uh, uh, by keeping your flowers centered here and here. Um, so, so the way you put your, these first four fern that you put in determines the shape that you're gonna make. And when you start with the shape, stick with that shape. I've had students who will um, start making one thing and then it sort of evolves into something else, but it never looks good. It's sort of a mix of the two and it just, it has, it has trouble with balance. Um, one side, it should have a focal area. It's hard to get a focal area when you start with a round arrangement and then suddenly you make it one-sided. Um, so you wanna decide what you're gonna do first, then put it together, okay? Um, so we're gonna do an all around. So I'm gonna take that one out I'm going to look at that and say, yeah, okay, so that looks pretty good for size. So it's going to be this big by this big. And as long as your fern comes out, that's how far your flowers are going to come out. So looking at this going, maybe that's too big. Meh. Maybe I'm going to shorten this one here because I think this one's a little bit longer than the others. When you do pull your stem out to like adjust the length, uh, make sure it goes in a separate hole. Don't put it back in the same hole um, because you'll just kind of stretch that hole out and um, it'll, um, the stem won't hold tight and it'll fall out, okay? Then I've got these little ferns and I'm gonna continue kind of, let me show that a little bit. 
I'm gonna put some on the side. So I'm gonna kind of round it out now that I've got sort of a basic idea of, of the shape that I'm going with. I'm gonna start, and notice I'm gonna use this fern. Look at it. So it's got this big, is anybody gonna notice that? Nobody's gonna notice that. Don't throw it away because it's not perfect, okay? Nobody's perfect. We accept everything. So we, um, it's gonna be hidden. It's in the background. Nobody's gonna notice. Why waste the material um, by throwing it away just because it's missing? Trust me, you, you won't even notice this when you've got everything else in there. Um, some there. Okay, so you can sort of see what's going on here. So it's starting to take a round shape, right? It's round, that's what we're going for. Then we're gonna to start to fill the top in. So the way we do that is I'm gonna take little, little bits of this fern and I'm just gonna start filling them in. This, this part's easy, you guys can. When you wanna really hide that fern, Sometimes you can do that by taking a, a leaf that's very full like this and actually having it lay across like that, right? So that's a kind of an easy way to, to really fill it out and hide that. I'll do that a couple times here. And notice I'm not making a pattern. I'm not making these ferns so that they're all in the same direction or that they're, um, you know, uh, they're just going in where they're going in. And the other thing, and they're going in all different directions, sideways, see how I put this one in? No problem, right? I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna see what it looks like from the other side. And I wanna pick it up a little bit and say, okay. So I got a little bit of a hole over here I wanna deal with. So I'm gonna put a few of these in. Um, and putting fern in, um, it's kind of a style issue. Some people like it the like the greens real tight. Some people like them fluffy. Either way is fine. It's what makes you happy, right? If you like to see the flowers more than the fern, then keep your fern low. Hide your green, your uh, oasis, and your um, you know your foam and all that, and and have your flowers show. Personally, I like to see the fern, so um, I do tend to have some of my fern poking straight up through the flowers. But that's that's entirely up to you, what you want to do. So I'm turning it. I'm always turning it so I can see it from all sides. And um, I think I've got enough of this. So remember, I have other, other ferns to use. So I want to go ahead and um, I've got this fern right here ready to go. Myself a little bit of room here. Okay, so this is my um, rabbit's foot fern. So I only took a, we ha uh, I have a nice big plant. So I was able to take quite a few. I have maybe um, eight stems here. So, and, and they're so fine. And so the color's a little bit different. The shape's a little bit different. So I'm gonna just add these in here. Now, if you're buying uh, plant material, you may not have the option to have so many different kinds and that's fine because like I said, the fern is the background. Yeah, the fern or the leaves or whatever you're using. So I'm adding some right to the bottom. I'm adding some. This is something when you fern, think about um, just getting it done, all right? You're not doing any pattern. You're not doing, nobody's gonna see it. So you don't wanna put a lot of time into it, okay? And in fact, it looks better um, if you don't put time into it, if you just stick it in there. Of course, I like, I kind of like that woolly, shaggy kind of look um, when I make an arrangement. So what we're doing here is a very traditional all around So one of the things that we do in class is I make the students um, over here. We do a 
foliage arrangement, um, which is no flowers, only greens. Um, and that uh, kind of gets them sort of appreciating how much a gr you know, the greens can do for your arrangement. All right, I probably don't have room for much of this, but I am gonna add a little bit. This is the asparagus fern. If you guys have one of these plants as a house plant, you probably know how dangerous they are. They have these sharp little uh, thorns on the branches. So be very careful when you're using these that you don't stab yourself. All right, so I might just add one or two pieces of this in just for a different kind of a feel to it. And those little thorns are very sharp. You don't see them, they tend to like hide down in there, um, but they are quite intense. They wanna, they will stab you and not let go. And you're looking at this going, oh, maybe that's too many greens, you know? You don't have to put this many greens in. Um, you can go with far less, as long as you hide your, um, hide your bowl. Okay, so if you look at this, if you look at it, you can still see some in areas you can see the foam inside, but remember when you put your flowers in, you know, you still have a lot of plant material that's gonna go in here. I'm gonna stop before I get carried away. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute. I'm just gonna set it over here. We're gonna look at the flowers. I just wanna check my time. Okay, so, so I did purchase these flowers. I've got a couple different kinds here and I have some baby's breath as filler when I've got these flowers in, okay? So um, I'm gonna start with nine flowers. One, two, three, four, five. Um, six, seven, eight, nine. So what that's gonna do for us is um, every, when we put those first four ferns in on each of the sides, we're gonna do that with the flowers. Now, if you look at this, this is pretty full. It's almost too full. So I'm going to remove some of these side branches. I'm actually gonna cut it down, remove a little bit off the side and maybe a couple right in the center, just to loosen it up a bit. Um, and so this is how I'm going to, going to have my flowers. When you have a thick stem like this, <coughs> you want to cut like a pencil. You want to cut a nice sharp angle to it. I'm trying to get you to see that, if you can see that. A nice sharp angle, okay? Point, make a pencil point. So there's one, two, three, I'm gonna kind of loosen this one up. Four, let's start with those first four, okay? So these are gonna be our sides. I'm gonna take a lot of these little side pieces off. Let's take some of this from the center just to open it up a little bit, take a few of those off. They're very packed in here. Nice sharp point. I'm gonna check it for length. So yeah, we can go a lot shorter. And I just made myself a new one. Use that flower later. So I'm gonna go one, okay, two. Kathy, someone was asking if you're cutting the first four flowers the same length, kind of like what you did with the ferns. Exactly, yes. They're gonna match the fern. So they are gonna be the same length um, for an all around. Yes, they should all be the same length. Um, which is, you know, you can see me sitting here sort of adjusting the length of this. So I want them to match the fern. They're gonna come out and they're gonna hit the edge of that fern, okay? I'm gonna sharpen my point there so it goes in. Um, I'm gonna put this one over here. So my flowers don't match. So I bought this bunch from, I bought actually two bunches from Wegmans and it was a mixture of flowers. So I'm sort of 
spacing them out so they're not all the same flowers on one side. They're close in color, but the flower shape is a little different. So I'm just spreading them out a little bit. There's two more questions that came through. So one is, is it preferred to cut or pinch off the excess leaves? And then the other is, what type of pruner are you using? Okay. So um, the side material, the side branches, either way, you're not rooting it. It's not gonna, you know that it's not gonna last more than a week or two, you know, depending on the plant material. So it's not really that important. I usually, you saw me snapping them off when they're way down, but when they're real tight and close up, I'll use the nippers just cause I can get in there a little, a little better. Um, so either way is fine. Um, and I am taking off some of the side leaves. You can see that I'm doing that as well. Um, the thing about leaves is, uh, especially this, these are mums, um, chrysanthemums, and they, uh, the first thing that dies on them are the leaves. They're gonna curl up and turn brown within uh, a few weeks where the flower may last, or with a few days where the flower may last a few weeks. So get rid of the leaves from the start because they're gonna get ugly fast. So get rid of them. So you're gonna start, okay. So if you can see what I've got here, one, two, three, four, about the same length, each one, and um, about the same length uh, as the fur. All right, that's four. So here's five. The fifth one is gonna be height. And this one, you can make it tall, you can make it short. I'm gonna go with a little bit taller, okay? So that's five, about one, two, three, four, five. Now the last four, right, to make our nine. If you look at this, so, and, and the reason I, I teach it this way is sometimes when people are putting flowers in, they don't know where to start. So they'll sit there and they'll put things in on one side and then they'll turn it around and they'll put things in on the other side and they never match, right? They use up all their flowers on the first side. It happens all the time. Don't do one side and then go over and do the other side. You wanna do them everything at once. And that's where putting these in kind of sets the stage for everything else, okay? Um, so what we have now, so I have um, in my mixed bunch, I have um, three, carnations, and I guess this will be our fourth. So you can see how mixed, this is a very mixed bunch of flowers, okay? So we're gonna, we'll start with this one. I am gonna trim this down. So I'm gonna just snap those leaves right off. I'm gonna get it down to somewhere close to the, the size that we're gonna need. I'm gonna take all these side leaves off because they just get kind of nasty. Um, and I think, Gonna check it. So when you look at your fur and your, your uh, arrangement and you see the five um, flowers that are in there right now, uh, let, me, let me mention this. So these are little bunches of flowers just because that's the way these flowers came. If you have roses, you do it the same way, but you'll have a single rose, right? Um, so don't worry whether it's a cluster of flowers like this or if it's a single flower. They all sort of pull themselves together, okay? Um, so um, if you look at the top flower and the two sides, right? We have a triangle. You can see that triangle. So the, the, um, the last four flowers are gonna go in the center of those triangles. So one, two, three, right in the center, 45 degrees, right? And then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna say, okay, one, two, three, another triangle right in the center. We're gonna put this one, this is a single. So one, two, three, it should be here. The, the sides in an arrangement this size, the, um, these flowers tend to match up with the corners of the oasis, but they don't always. And in this case, it's so full, you can't even see the corners. 
So just make sure that it's at the 45 degree angle, right? And it's in the center of that, um, of that triangle. I'm gonna turn it again, one, two, three, another triangle right in the center at 45 degrees. We're gonna go that one. I'm gonna turn it, we have one last triangle, one, two, three. We have one last flower of our original nine right in the center, 45 degrees. Okay, so this is essentially the finished design. Now, if you had made two sides longer, then, then you would have your flowers coming out this way. But as a traditional round design, this is what we thought. Now, the flowers I have left, um, some filler flowers. I have uh, Ulstromeria, which I tend to take most of the uh, leaves off, um, because they just sort of hide the flowers. Uh, but I do leave a few on. And at this point then, once you have this, this is the shape, this is the size, this is the basic arrangement. You could stop here if you wanted. This would be perfectly acceptable. Um, but we're gonna fill it out because I have lots of flowers left. So I'm, at this point, I'm gonna just start putting flowers in wherever I feel like. I have one Snapdragon, which I will use. It has a very thick stem, so I'm cutting it into a nice point. Um, that in there. I'm just gonna keep turning. Here's some more Alstom area. And all of these, I bought all of these at Vegas. Um, so I'm starting at the top, but don't forget that you have you want to be filling out the um, uh, the bottom around the bottom edge as well. I have some. This shows you how how many uh, different flowers I've had. This is one uh, mini carnation, which is a, a spray, multiple flowers on one stem. The flowers are smaller, so I'm going to try to scatter them a little bit throughout the design. I'm not going to be able to scatter too much because I don't have too many of them. But I'm just gonna sort of tuck them in here or there, try to spread them out. So all of my, br this bright fuchsia color that this is or whatever cherry color is sort of spread out through the design. I have some more Alstrom area, a little bit different color. Um, I'm gonna add these in a few different spots to sort of help fill it out. And you can see as you're using this foam, so a lot of people, you know, people use vases, right? All the time, you know, very common, right? Well, the advantage to using foam is the flowers stay where you put them. Um, they don't shift around. Sometimes when you're making a vase, you get it looking just right, and then you add one more flower to it and everything sort of shifts and moves. And then you sort of lose whatever design you're trying to do. Um, it's not gonna do that in foam. That's one of the advantages to using the foam is everything stays put. Um, so that's, that's really nice. And notice I keep turning, I keep turning and I keep adding, making sure I get it in that, uh, at least a half an inch into the foam. And then I'm also looking as I'm, as I'm, I'm picking it up and I'm looking and saying, oh, look at this. Look at this big hole I have right here. I need to put something in there, right? Kathy, someone was asking, would the same types of principles um, relate if they were using just a tall vase? Maybe not a centerpiece one, but if you were just making a flower arrangement using a regular vase. Would the same, I'm sorry, say that question again? Would the same principles that you're using, so how you're placing the flowers, would that kind of be the same? If you're using a vase, um, some of it's going to be the same. If you're putting a vase in, one of the problems with vases, right, is everything shifts. So when you're putting your ferns in, remember always green first. And that means using foam, but also vases. You green your vases first. So you put your um, ferns in um, or whatever greens you have, uh, branches, you know, anything so that they crisscross down inside the, the vase. And then when you start putting your flowers in, you already have a little grid work and that's gonna help hold your stems upright. And then yes, you're gonna start with a tall one in the center, 
You're gonna cut shorter ones on the edge. You, you know, so one, two, three, four with the tall one, and then you'll start to fill in. Uh, bases are similar, but just because of the nature of them, you do handle them a little bit differently. But, but pretty close to the same, yeah. As far as how you're putting your flowers in. So I'm gonna try to put this in here and hide that. I got a big hole here. All right. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm checking it out. Looking at the, looks like that's fairly well hidden. So I guess that's okay. So then I'm gonna pull out my, my filler, my tiny flowers. This is baby's breath, right? Um, you can use many, many kinds of flowers for filler. Typically a filler is a flower that is smaller than your main flower. So if your arrangement, if you're making a big arrangement, so I, the uh, example I use in class um, with students is, say you're making um, something to sit in front of a podium on an altar, um, a casket spread, you know, something that's gonna droop down over the casket, something like that. Um, you want to, um, your, your, the bigger it is, the bigger your main flowers are gonna be. So these carnations seem to be pretty big, the mums seem to be fairly big, but when you're putting that next to spider mums, which can be six inches in diameter, they're actually pretty small. So if, if your main flower is six inches in diameter, then your filler flower is your mums. In our case, the mums are the main flower, so the filler is gonna be something that's much, much smaller. Um, so baby's breath, um, asters. Very often I go out in the field for class, I harvest, um, wild asters from the field. I harvest um, the solid, the um, Solidago, the um, goldenrod, right? The big yellow, beautiful yellow flowers. I harvest those. And very often, you know, going back to that question, yes, very often I end up bringing spiders in with me. I don't have, not too many ants, but spiders. Um, I just shake them off, I'm not afraid of spiders. Um, and when I use them for class, they also go in the cooler and that tends to slow the insects down a bit. So, uh, but yes, you wanna shake them off, clean them up as much as you can. Um, I've used, um, let's see, um, there's a lot of flower, um, the, the little bells, um, lily of the valley, those little tiny bell shaped flowers. If you're familiar with those. Those make a good um, a good filler. Uh, it all kind of depends on what you can get your hands on, and um, how big and how you want to how you want to make your arrangement. Okay. So if you look at this piece of uh, baby's breath, so this is pretty tall. So there's a couple of ways you can use your baby's breath, your filler flower. You can make because it's such a fine flower. It can be above the main flower, so it can sort of hover above them or it can sort of kind of go below them or you know it can be the same length that is up to you that's how you're going to make that your arrangement you're going to stylize it to what you like you know i kind of like a few flowers sort of hovering above other people want to keep it much more formal so they tighten everything down and it becomes a much more formal arrangement uh, my arrangements tend to be a little more sort of wildflowerish, you know, more, more, less formal, much more informal. Um, and you can do that um, when you add your filler. You can make it look more formal or less formal. So I'm going to just tuck these in here in very, and I'm turning it, right? So I'm going to put, I tend to put some in um, tight because I like to use everything I've got because I paid for it, right? So I want to use it. So I put some in short and some sort of stick above it because I'm using everything I've got. And notice I'm turning, I'm always turning it. And so you doing it this way, doing this type of an arrangement, you know, there's a lot of variation you can do. Um, and again, you do not, it does not have to be perfect, right? Just like the ferns, does it have to be a person, perfect piece, you know, what you might consider a perfect piece of, of baby's breath? No, so you look at this one. 
the center of it was cut out, it's still perfectly usable because once you tuck it in there, you don't even notice it, right? It sort of vanishes down inside. So I'm turning, let's see. And another thing you can do when you're putting the baby's breath in, it's so, it's so um, bendable that you can actually grab it and sort of pull it around flowers. So like I did this one here. So it was all sticking up here. And I'm like, ah, I want it kind of between there. So I just pull it down and it's sort of, it'll stay, you know, stay kind of, kind of stay where you put it. And so, you know, there's not, you know, doing the arrangements like this, it's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm showing you how, how this is done, but you can, a little bit of variation or a lot of variation, and you can get some amazing looking arrangements. Uh, so, let's see, is that going to be too long? And you can make them, you know, I, I have people, I do this um, kind of thing uh, very often in small groups. People want to learn, so I'll sit down and we'll make arrangements. And even though I tell them, the same, I'm telling them everybody in the group the same thing, every arrangement comes out looking different. You know, that's part of the art of it. That's probably, that's part of the fun is, you know, it's, it's your interpretation of what this uh, arrangement what I'm telling you what to do and how you interpret it. All right, I wanna look at it again. I still have a hole over here. I have the hole in the same spot, the same hole. I don't know if I have anything I can stick in there. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes we just end up with these. I gotta get a nice fat piece of baby's breath. Let's see what we got here. Tuck it right down in there. It. There. Okay. So now things to notice um, that fern that was damaged. You know, you don't even see it, right? It's, it's vanished. The uh, baby's breath that maybe wasn't perfect, you don't see it. Um, notice the shape of the arrangement. You have a nice ball. The idea is you're gonna go, the shape you're going for is like half a basketball. But you can vary that if you like them taller. The thing about setting it on a table, a dining room table, is you're gonna be sitting at the table, you're gonna be talking to the people next to you, you don't want it so high that you have to dodge it in order to talk to the person on the other side of the table. So you want to keep it under about 15 inches. So 12 inches is a good height. Um, or if you make a really big one, take it above uh, about 20 inches. And you can make those big umbrellas that they make for like weddings. You'll see that sometimes or the umbrella the table. Um, but for a typical table arrangement, 12 inches, no more than 15 inches high. Um, and that, there's my arrangement. So um, if anybody, I still have a hole in the back. So I'm gonna do this. If anybody has any questions. Oh, uh, somebody mentioned about clippers. What, I forgot to answer the clipper question. So this is just a cheap pair of clippers. They were about $7. You can get something like this at Walmart, no problem. You can use a pair of scissors. So a lot of the stems, like especially the baby's breath, it's such a tiny little stem that a pair of scissors will work fine if that's what you have to use. The thing you want to kind of avoid is a big pair of garden clippers because they tend to have problems cutting things that are, that are too small, right? These are made for cutting branches. And this is actually a small pair for cutting branches. I use this to cut multiple stems at once. But um, so you want to avoid going too big. Um, 
So uh, this is about, uh, this is like a three inch, I think, pair. And in class, we have uh, four inch pairs. We also have um, florist scissors, uh, which are about seven or eight. This was about seven or eight dollars, about six dollars. This was about six dollars. You can spend a little bit more, um, you know, eight to twelve dollars and get something a little fancier. Um, you don't have to spend forty dollars for a pair of clippers by any means. And if you're just doing something at home and you want to just use your house scissors, as long as it's a nice sharp pair, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, Kathy, there was some questions coming in about um, how do you water or do you need to water it again? Okay, so um, you want to water and you want to, um, so uh, if you, let me get this bowl here. So you'll see when the oasis goes in like this and you see this extra, right? So what you can do, um, the oasis will hold quite a bit of water. It'll hold a lot of water. But some flowers that you use maybe are going to absorb more water than the oasis actually has to give, or they'll absorb it faster. And then they tend to wilt. Things like hydrangea um, are very hard to use in oasis unless you have freestanding water so that it can really suck up the water. Um, so what you would do is you would fill your bowl with water. If you're if it's going to sit someplace um, where it may spill, fill it with water, let it sit for a few minutes, and then tip it to let the water drain out, okay? In your arrangement, put it right under the sink, let the water run right over the flowers. It's not going to hurt the flowers. The flowers in your arrangement are probably going to last a week, two weeks if you're lucky, right? Because they're already cut. So by the time they get from the person who grows them, they cut them, they ship them somewhere, they ship them somewhere. By the time you get them, they're two weeks old. Um, some will last a long time. Some are only gonna last a week, right? Expect your arrangement to last a week and it may last longer. And so as, your, as different flowers in your arrangement start to go, pull them out because they'll start to build bacteria up and the bacteria is what's gonna make your arrangement die faster than anything. Um, so when you water, pour the water right down over it, let it fill up. Um, Will using um, any sort of like flower food or plant food help to extend the life? It will, yes. So when you buy, I don't know where my packets are, usually when you buy a bunch of flowers, they have, they come with a packet. Now that packet, if you read the directions, it's that packet in a quart of water, typically. A quart of water, which is, it's like an eight ounce glass of water, right? It's not very much water. It might not even be enough to fill your container. So make your own using, what I find the best formula is in a quart of water, and you can scale up if you want to do, you know, a half gallon or something like that. Um, a quart of water, a teaspoon of sugar, a, and a teaspoon of bleach. And so what that gives you is it gives you the sugar, which is going to give the plant energy. So it'll help it last longer. And then the bleach is going to cut down on bacteria that is going to cause your flowers to die. Okay. So a little bit of bleach, a little bit of sugar, in a quart of water, shake it up. If it has bleach in, you wanna be careful about adding it over top of the flowers because it could potentially could bleach your flowers as well. Uh, but carefully pour it down until it fills your bowl up and, um, and keep your bowl filled. And, um, and that, should, that, that will, will help it last much longer. That was a good question. Awesome, I think that's all we have time for tonight. Um, but thank you so much, Kathy, and thank you everyone for joining us. We will be sending around an email with the recording of this event um, after the fact. So um, look out for an email from us and the recording should be uploaded to our website um, probably in a day or two. So you can look for that if you wanna go back and rewatch anything. Um, again, thank you everyone for joining us.